well we have seen the different concepts of uniform circular motion in the session 1 of circular motion now welcome all of you to the virtual classes of science here where we are going to extend our studies into the non uniform aspect of circular motion as well so we have got the equation 3 for centripetal acceleration and we have got the direction of centripetal acceleration as the direction is towards the center so i have got centripetal acceleration because of change of direction of velocity change of direction of velocity this is a linear concept a c is equal to v square divided by r v square divided by r now i can represent the same acceleration as different expressions or different expression for centripetal acceleration i'm wiping out this diagram i hope all of you have followed the uniform circular aspect so i have got ac is equal to v square divided by r ac is equal to v square divided by r and we have v is equal to omega cross r and we all know that omega is upward r is towards the radius and omega cross r is these two are making 90 degree with each other this can be simply written as omega r v is equal to omega r substituting that one over here this will become omega square r that is another expression for centripetal acceleration and we know omega omega is equal to 2 pi times mu so this can also be written as 4 pi square nu square r since omega is equal to 2 pi nu and we know nu is equal to 1 by t or we can put this one as 4 pi square r divided by t square so these are different expressions which we will be using for solving problems when the corresponding quantities are given these are the different expressions for centripetal acceleration so that concepts complete the ideas on centripetal acceleration now this is we can write all these now the second possibility what is the second possibility for having an acceleration for a particle the particles direction of the velocity can change that we have already discussed now the next possibility is the magnitude of velocity can change the magnitude of velocity can change magnitude change that means at different points on the circle the particle is having different velocities different tangential velocities now this concept changes to a uniform to non uniform case or we are going to see the aspects of non uniform circular motion non uniform circular motion so what is the problem over here we have a circular motion a different point say p1 it has got a velocity of v1 at p2 it has got a velocity of v2 so magnitude of v1 is not equal to magnitude of v2 so we can say that tangentially the particle is accelerating or we will call that acceleration as tangential acceleration tangential acceleration we can put it as delta vt divided by delta t this can be written as equation for the direction of the tangential acceleration is along the tangent itself direction is along the tangent so when the magnitude changes we can write it has got a tangential acceleration which is equal to what delta v t divided by delta t now look at that circle suppose the particle is having different 
velocities at different points. This is making different values at different points. We have Vt is equal to omega cross r. Vt is changing, but r is a constant. So obviously, omega also should change. If Vt is changing at different points, we have r as a constant value for all the circular points. On a circle, the value of r is constant. So, omega is changing. What is that meaning? Along this one, there is an acceleration or we can say that the particle is having an angular acceleration as well. So, when there is a tangential acceleration, there is an angular acceleration as well. Angular acceleration. This is represented with the symbol alpha. That is nothing but delta omega divided by delta t. Why it happens? We got a change for Vt gives rise to At. If Vt is changing, if R is constant, omega has to change. If Vt is increasing, omega has to increase. If Vt is decreasing, omega has to decrease. The change of omega, what is change of omega? Change of angular velocity change of angular velocity with respect to time gives rise to angular acceleration. So, we got alpha vector as delta omega divided by delta t. This is also directed along the along the axis or that is perpendicular to the plane of the circle that is along the axis. We got alpha. I can write alpha is equal to delta omega divided by delta t. Now, see whether there is any relationship between these two. Relationship between alpha and a t. We have relation between alpha and a t. We have v t is equal to omega cross r. What is AT? AT is delta VT divided by delta T or that is delta omega divided by delta T cross R. So, AT is equal to alpha cross R. Relationship between. So, we can write AT tangential acceleration is equal to angular acceleration multiplied by the radius vector. This is the observation. So, we got a relationship between A, T and alpha. Looking at that table, it is very interesting for all of us to see that we have got linear parameters over here. We have got angular parameters in the other column. We have got a relationship between angular and linear in the final column. You can see always uh, the linear parameter, whether it is linear displacement or linear velocity or linear acceleration, always the linear is equal to angular multiplied by radius. So, that is a common term for you. Linear is equal to angular multiplied by the common factor or the non factor for a circular motion which is radius. So, this will help all of you to remember a short form between all. It can be linear displacement, then it is angular displacement. It can be linear velocity, it can be angular velocity. It can be linear acceleration, it can be angular acceleration. So, this is the common form which will help all of you to understand the concepts of uniform as well as non uniform circular motion at a single aspect. Now, I am going to conclude this with the different vectors. We have got many vectors for this. I am going to plot all of them and I am going to give you a work so that you can find out the directions of all the vectors. I am going to wipe off this. First, 
I will take the non vector which is the radius r, second is tangential velocity, centripetal acceleration, tangential velocity, sorry, next I will write angular velocity, next is centripetal acceleration, uh, next is tangential acceleration, next is alpha. We have studied this many vectors right now. Uh, my first aim is R and V T. Draw a diagram over here. This is my circle. This is R vector. Direction of omega. This is the direction of V T. This is center O. Look at that. I can say R and V T are perpendiculars. R and omega are perpendiculars. R and AC, what is AC? AC is directed towards the center. R is outward and AC is inward. So R and AC are making 180 degree. So this is 90 degree. This is 90 degree. This is 180 degree. Now R and AT, what about R and AT? AT is along VT. So AT is also along the same direction. So R and AT also makes 90 degree. R and alpha. If omega is in this direction, alpha is also in the same direction. That also makes 90 degree. So it gives you a very good uh, idea about the vector directions, how they are forming. Now you can repeat this one for all the other vectors. I am taking this one, Vt. Draw the other one, omega. AC. AT, alpha. Look at them. VT and omega. You can say 90 degree. VT and AT, 90 degree. VT and AT, 0 degree. VT and alpha, 90 degree. If you are interested, you can repeat this one for the next one. Write AT. AT. And sorry, this one is omega. AC, AT, alpha. Omega and AC, what about them? 90 degree out of phase. Omega and AT, omega and AT, how they are represented? They are also 90 degree. Omega and alpha, they are in the same direction, 0 degree. Studying vectors will improve your con uh, concepts depth very easily. Now, next one, if we have to draw, I will draw this coming over here. We can draw the next one. Omega is over, so AC. What is AC? AC, AT and alpha. AC is towards the center, AT is along the tangent, radius and tangent, opposite direction of radius is also sun, point 90 degree. AC and alpha, 90 degree. Final one, AT and alpha. What about AT and alpha? AT is along the tangent, alpha is along the normal, we can say that are also making 90 degree. So see, if you learn this table, Obviously, there are different possibilities. For different competitive exams, you may see the questions like, what is the angle between tangential velocity and centripetal acceleration? This can be possible. As well, what is the angle between angular acceleration and uh, angular velocity? Or angular acceleration and, uh, say, velocity vector, which is tangential. There are different possibilities. If you learn this, you can see that 2, 4, 5, then 9, 12, 13, 14 relations we have studied in Sunday. So this will be helpful all of you to understand the concepts in detail and in a deep manner. So that is all about uniform and non-uniform circular motion as a virtual demonstration of science here. So thank you all of you for watching this session.
with us and let's hope they will be joining in more and more sessions in the coming classes.